Welcome everyone to your Shader Nodes training. I'm CG Matter and this is lesson 1.5 of the course. In this lesson we're going to talk about connections which is what links our nodes together. In this case we have our default material which again has a principled BSDF node connected to a material output node. More specifically we're sending information from the principled BSDF's output socket to the material output node's input socket. Note that it doesn't matter if we move these nodes around because this network is purely a graphical representation. So all the following networks are equivalent even though visually they look fairly different. I even tested this principle outside and everything seems to work how you'd expect. By dragging this link from the input side, we can let go of it over the backdrop, which severs the connection. Because of this, our cube has now lost its shading since nothing is feeding into the surface input. To restore this connection, we just simply drag a new link from output to input. If we duplicate our node with Shift-D, there are now two candidates for our material output node. When we try switching these, Blender will automatically sever our original connection since only one input can be accepted at a time. For my mathematicians watching, yes, this does work like an injective mapping, and for every Anyone else who wants to feel included, you can try to solve this problem. All that being said, one input can still go to multiple outputs. Another thing to look out for is trying to connect input to input, which isn't allowed because Blender hates you. Now that we've covered the connection fundamentals, let's go over some hotkeys that will help speed things up. First of all, I want to show you how to quickly form connections in a more automatic way. If we hold down Alt and drag while right-clicking, we get this red line with two of our nodes highlighted. When we let go of the mouse, this automatically forms a connection between the two highlighted nodes. This operation is obviously location-dependent, so make sure you're using this shortcut with the right pair of nodes. To get even more control over this, you can add Shift to the hotkey, so that's Alt, Shift, and then right-click drag, which lets you explicitly choose your target socket. To cycle down the inputs, we can just select our desired node and use the hotkey Alt-S. If instead there are two connections formed, Alt-S will then switch these links instead of cycling down. So that's how you quickly form connections, but there are also shortcuts for breaking them. The one I use most frequently is holding down Control and dragging while right-clicking, which lets us draw a path. And you want to think of this as a knife cut, so we sever a connection by just passing over it. This of course works with multiple connections, and if we sever a link with a fancy path, we actually unlock the real-life add-on which is usually behind a $10 paywall. If we want to sever all the connections for a specific node, we can just hold down Alt and drag the node over. This becomes especially useful when you have a node with a ton of connections. But that's all you really need to know about connections without me completely overwhelming you with hotkeys. So in the next lesson, we'll finish off the introductory chapter with some organizational tips. So I'll see you there in just a bit.